For half a century, Don Kuchenmeister has been a beekeeper in Georgia. In the past, he could easily find wild beehives to replenish his domestic stocks, but not these days. Very seldom. There's not as many feral hives or wild hives anymore. The pesticide has eliminated most of that. He says pesticides are accumulating in the hives, affecting reproduction. Inferior and weaker bees are less resistant to disease, mites, and other parasites. Kuchenmeister sees firsthand what scientists are also finding. In the last 20 years or so, a number of us started to notice that we were losing our pollinators. Steve Buckman is a bee biologist and a volunteer with a North American Pollinator Protection Campaign. They're concerned not only with declining numbers of bees, but also other pollinators. Even though bees are the champion pollinators we have, there are lots and lots of other insects, flies, beetles, wasps, thrips, even ants. And among animals with backbones, there are hummingbirds and bats that also pollinate. Pollinators are essential to plant reproduction, carrying fertilizing pollen from one flower to another. If we lose our pollinators, we lose an essential first step in the food production process. Literally, those animals that move the pollen from flower to flower that create our fruits and vegetables. Many of those pollinators are being lost in highly industrialized nations because they're losing the places where they live. The vital habitats where their food plants are, um, as these lands are converted from wild lands into housing developments, that sort of thing, and these habitats are broken up into smaller and smaller islands, that really is what is affecting our pollinators. Until recently, pollinators as a group had been largely ignored by science and the public. They're not the most charismatic of all of the conservation animals that you could find, but they're probably the most vital. They provide us with ecosystem services that touch just about every human being. Anyone who eats has been touched by a pollinator. Almost one-third of the food we eat comes from pollinated plants. And then there are medicines, beverages, and fibers, things that commonly benefit our lives that we usually take for granted. So this is a vital aspect of everyday life that has largely been ignored by many, many people. And now we're recognizing, because there is evidence that pollinators may be in trouble and there may be decline, that we need to pay attention to them. We can pay attention, they say, and take some measures ourselves to promote and protect pollinators in our own backyards, at school and work, and in public gardens. First, create habitat. Wherever you are, you can create habitat by planting native plants. Second, reduce your own impact on the environment, and that can mean walking to work one day a week or telecommuting or turning out the lights, all the activities that reduce our consumption of fossil fuels. The third thing is to get more connected to nature. And that can mean take a walk, start gardening, observe the world around you. To help avert this problem, what we need to do is to become better stewards of our environment and to provide plants, habitats, and homes for the animals that pollinate crops and wild plants that we depend on. For those up close to the champion pollinators, unless we act to solve this growing problem, the consequences are obvious. Without bees, we're not going to have no pollination. We're not going to have no fruits, no vegetables. And long term, you know, the food system is going to dry up. For Assignment Earth, I'm Gary Stryker.